My name is Will Wiseman. I am an executive director here at Singularity University. I run our conferences, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the first ever Singularity Summit Global, or Singularity University Global Summit. Uh, so thank you. We have over 1,400 people that are going to be joining us for the next three days. Really an extraordinary, extraordinary gathering, and so exciting to be bringing this whole community together for the first time. So for you non-locals, I'm incredibly excited to welcome you to San Francisco. As you know, this is the tech capital of the world in many ways. It's the home of Singularity University, and it is uh, really a perfect, perfect place for us to be bringing everyone together and to be able to experience this first event. So for those of you who aren't uh, intimately familiar with SU, I want to take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit about who we are, about kind of our founding history, uh, and kind of tell you about what makes us tick. So our mission here is to educate, inspire, and empower individuals to use accelerating technologies to solve the world's greatest challenges. Um, you can think of us as part think tank, part educator, and part new company accelerator. It's a very, very rich ecosystem. Uh, you're going to hear a lot about it over the next few days, get to touch a lot of different elements of the, of the SU family that all makes it possible. So at SU, we focus on eight accelerating technologies. Uh, these are areas that have crossed over to be information, technology, uh, information technologies that are growing exponentially. They're areas like neuroscience, biotech, robotics, energy, computing, AI, medicine, and nanotech. We think these are going to be the biggest uh, drivers of disruption going forward, and, uh, and it's why we've chosen to focus our curriculum around them. You're also going to hear a lot over these next few days about convergence. So it's not just about these individual technologies. It's really about how do these different technologies come together in a lot of times unanticipated ways to cause a breakthrough. So it's the combination of AI and robotics that is doing amazing things, or it's a combination of nanotechnology and medicine that come together in a really novel way where you see some of these really significant breakthroughs taking place. So at SU, um, I think as most of you know, we're a benefit corporation. Impact is a huge part of who we are, and we focus on these 12 different global grand challenge areas. These are areas where we think technology can have an outsized impact in moving the world forward. It's where we've chosen to focus a lot of our curriculum, a lot of our company startup efforts around, uh, and, and, um, and resources just in general. So identify the world's biggest problems, go after and try to, uh, try to actually move the world forward. So I want to tell you a little bit about the founding of SU. You're going to get to hear from uh, both of these gentlemen uh, in just a little bit, in different ways, but in a little bit. Um, so it's rooted in the founding back in 2008 with Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil. So they came together at a TED conference, actually, of all places. Ray had written a book called The Singularity is Near, uh, and in it had identified this law of accelerating returns and had spent time talking about um, exponentially accelerating technology. And, and they both kind of, as they started talking, realized that you know, we were about to go through this period of really profound change. Uh, and that there was really no place that you could go to to learn about that and kind of prepare for it. And so if you thought about going to a traditional university or studying or even a specific course, you might focus on one narrow little area and you really would not get exposure to this breadth of, of technologies and this overall understanding of how the world was changing so rapidly. So the idea for SU was born in 2008, it officially kicked off. So Peter Diamandis is the first half of the founding equation. Uh, you're going to hear from him next. He is really an extraordinary guy. He is um, an author, uh, wrote a book called Abundance and Bold. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about uh, having an abundance mindset. Uh, besides co-founding SU, he is a co-founder of Human Longevity, of Planetary Resources, of Bold Capital Partners. Very, very active guy, speaking all over the world. We're super excited to have him here. It's his abundant mindset, which really uh, has created the lens at which we look at the world at SU. And so it's had just a huge, huge impact here. And, and this concept of abundance, which we'll talk about, it's really, uh, I can't emphasize enough how important it is. And um, actually, I was reading in Wired Magazine the endorsement for Hillary Clinton, and they specifically called out going from the difference between Donald Trump and Hillary uh, Clinton, one of the two differences was the sense of kind of a scarcity mindset and an abundance mindset. And interesting to just see that kind of starting to uh, enter into the uh, political landscape as well. So Ray is the other half of the founding equation. He is a brilliant, brilliant futurist, uh, inventor, also an author. He is a director of engineering over at Google. Uh, 
and has really been one of the most accurate predictors of the future in the history of the world. And we're going to go into why he's been able to do that. Unfortunately, he is not able to be here in person. He did have a couple things that he wanted to, uh, to share with us. So we're going to be hearing from him throughout the conference, but I want to just play a short little talk right now. I want to welcome you to the Singularity University Global Summit. This whole project started eight years ago. Peter and I were talking over dinner and <clears throat> this idea of starting a university focused on the exponential potential of information technology came up. And I said, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. And that's how big things start with some, some idea. So you really should be alert at all times because you never know when some really good idea is gonna cross your path and you should you know, notice that. So we pursued this and I've been thrilled at how this has developed in an exponential manner. Our whole goal is to bring the power of exponential thinking and the understanding of how exponentially growing information technologies can not only change the world but overcome the major challenges that humanity has struggled with for eons. And we, we can see the tremendous progress we've made just in recent years and that's speeding up and so we're focused on promise and peril. Technology has always been a double-edged sword. I'm optimistic that we can reap the promise while controlling the peril. We'll be talking about that here. We've got some great speakers and uh, this will be, I think, a wonderful interactive experience. So welcome. Great. So, um, and again, we'll be hearing from Ray throughout the, uh, throughout the next few days. Um, so we're here today because incredible things are, are happening in the world, and you're here because you've, you've noticed that. You've seen some of the dramatic changes that are taking place. Uh, and I just wanted to highlight a few of the things that, that I've picked out and noticed over the last, uh, last several months that I think are really indicative of some of this, uh, these amazing changes that are taking place. So, uh, and a lot around in the energy area, which is super exciting to see. So clean energy jobs surpassing oil drilling for the first time in the United States. You know, we've been talking about autonomous vehicles for a while now, and what's extraordinary is they're going to actually be rolling out this month. Uh, Uber is launching a fleet of autonomous vehicles, as you may have read, in Pittsburgh. So it's not like this is happening in 2025 or 2030 or 2020. It's happening now. And granted, they're still, you know, working through some of the kinks, but this is stuff that's really starting to, to, to happen and we're starting to see now. Um, I love this one. So this is Portugal went four straight days running completely off renewable energy. Like, who would have imagined three or four or five years ago that it would be even a year ago that an entire country could have run off of renewable energy? This stuff is happening. It's really exciting. The world is changing. Um, Norway, also. Like, while our, our Congress is trying to kind of figure out whether climate change is happening or not, there's countries that are acting and moving on this and exciting to see, um, you know, Norway banning petrol-driven cars by 2025. So imagine that, a whole country that is going to be without petrol-driven um, vehicles. And this is a different theme here, but uh, a leveraging the blockchain, a distributed autonomous organization was launched earlier this year, ultimately got up to $150 million in funding. So not run by anyone, not owned by anyone, uh, built off the blockchain to make investments in early stage companies. And you just start to think about, like, seems like science fiction, but it's actually happening now. And a lot of that is all driven, really all of this is driven by what's happening with these exponential technologies and, while we're, uh, and why we're kind of living in one of the most exciting periods in, in humanity. So uh, Ray's Law of Accelerating Returns is the foundation for our curriculum at SU. And, um, but to really understand what that means, you need to understand exponential thinking and exponential growth. So exponential basically means something doubling in a finite period of time repetitively. Um, and I'm going to take you through just a couple quick examples of, of what that looks like. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is because this is not how we were programmed. Uh, to be able to think. So our brains are very much designed for a you know, very different world. It was about survival. It was about what was happening in your immediate vicinity. Um, it was local. It was linear. And today, though, it's much more about global and exponential. So we hear about things that happen on the other side of the world, and it has a dramatic impact on us. Uh, we might hear about them in minutes. We might hear about them in seconds. And now we have you know, computers that are hearing about them in milliseconds. So I want you to imagine a room that is filling up with water. So it can hold up to a billion gallons of water. Every minute, that amount of water is doubling. 
you can see in these early days, it's like nothing is happening, which is like with these technologies in the early days. It seems like nothing's happening, it's disappointing, this will never amount to anything. But all of a sudden, you reach a period where you start to hit this inflection point. It happens around step 25. You still got 97% of the room is full of water, but in these last five or six steps, all of a sudden it goes and that room is completely full. And so it's why people will look at things like solar technology or sequencing the human genome and feel like it's so far out before those things are going to happen because we might be at step 25 or step 26. But really all that means is that we've got four or five or six more doublings before we're at a place where there's profound change. So Ray's Law of Accelerating Returns, this is a chart from his book, The Singularity is Near, talks about five different paradigms, uh, it goes back to the 1890 and 1900 census and shows electromechanical calculators as kind of being the first paradigm here. Uh, and what you see here basically is very smooth progress. So over the last hundred years, the fundamental measure of information technology calculations per second per dollar, so the price performance of computing, has followed a predictable and exponential trajectory. Really, really important insight. Um, and you'll see, I mean, it's incredibly smooth. So uh, we know that technology is not smooth. We know that each technology has a finite lifespan. What we see is basically each of these, uh, these, each of these technologies is an S-curve. So as it comes on, as it starts to accelerate, uh, and then it reaches a, an apex and, and finally a maximum where it starts to, to taper, and then another technology comes on. And so it's basically a series of these nested S-curves that together create this very smooth and predictable curve. And what's also really interesting is it doesn't matter what's happening in the world. We could be in war, peace, you know, feast or famine, and that chart seems to continue to grow uh, up and to the right. Uh, so it's kind of once something crosses over to become an information technology, it basically is on this path and there's almost no stopping it. Very powerful, really important to understand. It's what made Ray such a powerful predictor of the future, because he can look at this chart and he can say, okay, if I know the price performance of computing is going to be you know, it's here now and it's going to continue to grow at this different path. I can make a prediction that in 2030, we're going to have for $1,000 a computer that is going to be as powerful as a human brain. And I can look and see in 2050 that we're going to have a computer for $1,000 that's going to be as powerful as all human brains combined. And then start to think about what does that mean? You know, what does that world look like? What kind of products, what kind of services will we have when, when that uh, transpires? So I want to show you also just a few examples of exponential growth in, in real life. Uh, we're seeing it kind of more and more around us all the time. Um, in particular, if you look at storage, you know, going back to 1956, five megabytes cost you $120,000. 2005, 128 megabytes was $99. And today, 128 gigabytes, 33 bucks. So uh, in the last 11 years, that's a 3,000 time increase, and in the last 60 years, that's a 90 million times improvement. Same thing with integrated circuits. You look at the transistor count back at the, in 1971, 2300, 2300 on the 4004. Um, we look today at the latest Intel Broadwell chip, it's 14.4 billion transistors and 14 nanometers. Uh, that's in 620, if you look at all the faster, cheaper um, uh, price, price performance improvement, it's a $621 billion, billion improvement in 45 years. So incredible, incredible acceleration in capabilities and incredible decrease, obviously, in the price. Same thing in the digital camera front. So this is Steven Sasan. He's the founder, uh, or the inventor, excuse me, of the first digital camera. Uh, if we look at this now, almost five billion times improvement in price performance. So smaller, cheaper, um, higher resolution. So, we're here because these are extraordinary times. There's incredible change that's taking place. Uh, anytime you have that type of change, that type of disruption that's taking place, that also creates a, a tremendous amount of challenges. And so what's been interesting is we've gone out and looked uh, and tried to quantify some of this. Uh, and ex one example being the S&P 500. So if you look back in the 1920s, the average lifespan of a company on the S&P 500 was 67 years. You look at that today, and it's 15 years and dropping significantly. Um, same thing on the Fortune 500 list. So it's predicted that 40% of the companies on that list will not even exist in 10 years. 
So what we're seeing basically is companies come online faster, they get bigger faster, but they also disappear faster. And so it means you need to be constantly reinventing yourself, constantly embracing change, and thinking about creative disruption to drive your business forward. So my hope, we're going to have you know, an incredible amount of content over these next, uh, these next few days, and you're going to hear a lot of things that are going to be you know, challenging, potentially stressful. Uh, my hope is that you're going to, instead of viewing this as stressful uh, and, uh, and, and in a negative, that you'll view it as a positive. And really, because these, these type of disruptive opportunities really create tremendous opportunity for us all. And so if you're a lover of change, if you want to be someone who's driving the world forward, there's really no time better to be alive. Uh, and, and we hope you'll uh, come out of that, uh, come out of here with that, with that perception. And, and part of that is really embracing, which Peter will talk about in just a moment, is this notion of abundance. And it's really a complete shift in how you think about the world, how you look, about, look at the world. And once you make that shift, you start to see things in a very, very different way and, and can kind of realize a lot of uh, new possibilities. So, what I wanted to do this morning was, was basically set the stage on exponentials, obviously welcome you, tell you a little bit about uh, Ray's laws of accelerating returns. Uh, we're hoping again that you will come out of this empowered, excited, energized to go out there and, and be the change agents for, for positive in the world, to grow your businesses, but also to really impact the world in a positive way. Because uh, as Peter likes to say, um, you know, the best way to create a billion dollars is to go help a billion people. And, and again, there's so many exciting ways to go out there and, and touch so many folks. So I want to talk a little bit about these conferences. Uh, again, we're going to have over 1,400 people with us over these next uh, two and a half days. There are some ridiculously amazing people in this room. It's a very rare opportunity to kind of bring everyone together. Uh, and I really want to encourage you to, to take advantage of it. So to, to make an effort to get to know the people around you, to take advantage of all the different networking opportunities that we have, to participate in the symposiums and unconferences that are going to be taking place. So um, I know it's going to be a lot. People are going to be exhausted. We've got you running around, all sorts of different speakers and things going on. But it's worth it. Push hard. Really try to take advantage of these next few days. Days. So the Chinese have a proverb that says, may you live in interesting times. There is no question uh, we are and the world is going to continue to go through this period of rapid dematerialization, demonetization, and democratization uh, that Peter will go into in just a little bit. But I, I want you to think about uh, over these next couple days really how are you going to play a role in that? And hopefully some of what you're going to see uh, over these next couple days is going to really help guide you uh, in those efforts and kind of trying to imagine and dream up a new future for not only yourself, but for the world uh, as a whole. So with that, I want to thank you. We're really excited to, to get this going. I want to welcome uh, out to the stage Peter Diamandis and uh, I want to chat with him just for a second and then we're going to get right into his abundance talk. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.